Recently, here in Idaho, we passed a law that makes hormone therapy and surgeries such as chopping off the healthy breasts of 14-year-old girls illegal. The new law was blocked from going into effect by a lower court, but this week, the Supreme Court has allowed it to go into effect while the law is being challenged. Now, why is that a win for trans kids, you might be wondering? Because they are kids and can't fully understand the decision they're making. And even their parents can't fully understand the decision they're signing off on. And here's the thing. The people who are setting the guidelines on how trans kids should be treated in healthcare know all of this and do it anyway. Check this out. This is from a Zoom meeting from WPATH, the World Professional Association for Transgender Health children and young adolescents, we wouldn't really expect them. It's kind of a developmental, it's out of their developmental range sometimes to understand the extent to which some of these medical interventions are impacting them. And so I think I, I try to kind of do whatever I can to help them understand best, they, best I can. But what really disturbs me is when the parents can't tell me what they need to know about a medical intervention that apparently they signed off for. How disturbing is that? The people who set the guidelines on how to treat a gender-confused child know that the child and their parents can't understand the gravity of the decisions they're making. But it's even worse than that. Uh, some of the Dutch researchers started uh, gave some data about um, young adults who had transitioned and reproductive regret, like regret. And it's there. Um, and I don't think any of that surprises us. I don't remember any of the numbers or anything. I just, again, I have a picture of a slide, but hopefully this is something that will get published in the next while. But, um, you know, I think, I think now that I follow a lot of kids into their, into their mid twenties, I'm always like, Oh, the dog isn't doing it for you. Right. Yeah. They're like, no, I just found this, you know, wonderful partner and now we're kids and da da da. So I think, you know, It doesn't surprise me, but I don't know still what to do for the 14-year-olds. These people not only know that a child can't comprehend how the decision to take hormone blockers or having an unnecessary surgery will affect their life, they know that many of them will regret doing it, and they still advocate for them doing it. Something that is misunderstood by the people who support these kinds of procedures being pushed on kids is that people like me are against it not because I hate so-called trans people, I'm against it because I care about these kids. These are children, and children shouldn't be used in experiments. Now, you might be wondering why this Zoom meeting from WPATH is floating around the internet. It's because of a journalist named Michael Schellenberger. There were also a lot of documents that were leaked as well. Here he is on Jordan Peterson's podcast talking about it. The picture that this organization, WPATH, had presented to the world and to the American Medical Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the Endocrine Society, every major medical organization, was a picture of real professionalism grounded in the best available science and evidence. They have something called standards of care, which are ostensibly guidelines for proper medical care for people suffering from so-called gender dysphoria, gender distress, And they're in their eighth version of that. So they call it Standards of Care 8 or SOC 8. Based on their public presentation, you would think that this is a serious scientific and professional body. It is not. When you read these documents, what you see is a lot of spitballing, a lot of people making things up. You don't see a lot of references to what's in the standards of care. But even if you did, you would learn that what's in the standards of care is effectively pseudoscience. There is no evidence base to support these radical interventions, which is puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, meaning testosterone for females and estrogen for males, and then surgeries, both they euphemistically refer to as top and bottom surgeries. And people can understand that's what we're talking about, breast elimination, uh, double mastectomies for uh, girls as young as 13, 14, 15 years old, and genital surgeries, which are, of course, irreversible, including on adolescents. It's extremely shocking to read these conversations. There's so much to unpack in them. I think there's a kind of horror to it that for people like me that have tried to stay away from this for a long time, I've certainly heard you talk about it and seen you write about it. I'd seen, I'd read Abigail Schreier's book. 
But honestly, my psychological reaction until I was confronted with these files and asked to effectively bring them into the world uh, was to, of denial. I just didn't really think that these things were going on at the scale at which they were occurring. I may, I thought maybe people were exaggerating what's happening. These files put to rest any doubts anybody should have that what is happening is one of the greatest medical mistreatment scandals in human history. It truly is an absolute travesty what's happening to these kids. I encourage you to listen to the whole interview Michael did with Jordan Peterson. The link is in the description. Many of you know that a couple of years ago I moved from California to Idaho to raise my kids in a more sane environment. So, what's California doing these days? They've passed laws to protect parents who sterilize and maim their kids in a state like Idaho, where it's now against the law. In an NBC News article last year, talking about California's governor signing this legislation, look at what they say about so-called gender-affirming care. As a result of the policies, some families of transgender minors have decided to leave their home states so they can continue to access gender-affirming care, which is supported by accredited medical groups, including the American Medical Association, American Academy of Pediatrics, and American Psychological Association. Well, those organizations get their guidelines from WPATH. And thanks to Michael Schellenberger, we now know, and they now know that we know, that they're aware of the poor outcomes for these kids. And they're aware of the regret many of them have just a few years later. And they know that kids, and even their parents, don't understand what they're agreeing to when they decide to take sterilizing drugs and get life-altering surgeries. The sad part is that it's much deeper than just WPATH. The doctors performing the surgeries know the harm they're doing. The pharmaceutical companies know the harm their drugs are doing. And so do the politicians and the media and the activists that pretend it's life-saving care. It makes me sick to my stomach that as a society, we're allowing vulnerable kids to be pushed into making life-altering decisions that do tremendous harm. And it's hard to believe that so many people are in denial or unwilling to speak up. Look, a law that prevents these kinds of atrocities from being done to children is a win. And it's a big win for so-called trans kids because they're the children that are in danger. And that's the simple truth. Hey guys, thanks for watching. And if you all want to support this channel, check out the links in the description and let's keep putting some common sense back into the great debate.